Welcome to a Land Rover guide to the Land Cruiser. The drivetrain on a Land Cruiser is very similar to the Land Rover. It's four-wheel drive system, although the main difference being that this is a part-time four-wheel drive system. So it essentially has a two-wheel drive version, so half of the drivetrain can be completely isolated. The hub is pretty much identical. It's got a brake disc bolted to the back of the hub. It's got five wheel studs and then the drive flange goes on here. This is the equivalent of the drive member here. Um, this is holds the shaft in there, but then it's got the extra arrangement, which is the freewheeling hub. So the freewheeling hub will lock this. As you see, it just spins in there. The freewheeling hub will run into here over the splines of that and it will lock this to that and that's how the freewheeling hubs tend to work. This is held on, one of the main differences is this is held on with these cone washers um, through the studs so instead of these being instead of it being drilled on here and you put bolts through these have got the studs in here um, I think I'd probably prefer it the other way around like Land Rover because studs tend to get damaged quite easily and if you have a problem with this strip the threads or what have you it's a lot more tricky to deal with that um, but anyway they have this cone washer that fits over those bolts in there with a spring washer and a nut these are a bit fiddly to get out so you can't get this off as easily as the Land Rover I'll just show you how it fits on like that and then the freewheeling hub goes things in alignment there like that and you lock the freewheeling hubs like that and unlock like that I don't really like freewheeling hubs I prefer the four-wheel drive permanent four-wheel drive arrangement of the Land Rover because this requires you to get in and out of the cab and there's a lot that can go wrong by leaving the vehicle in four-wheel drive when you leave an off-road situation if you're less, if you're not in the cab and it's not as easy to do it, you're less likely to remember to do it. it. Could cause a lot of problems. I tend to think. This is the circlip that holds the CV joint laterally inside the drive member here. So this circlip goes on the end of the shaft in here and stops the CV joint moving in and out. This thing is a real pig because it's not like a typical circlip with the holes in there you've actually got to get a proper like almost like reverse pliers to separate it spread it apart and bring it out i don't like that arrangement um, i prefer the land rover arrangement with the circlip even though that's still a bit fiddly to get on um, having the holes and use proper circlip pliers is better plus there doesn't seem to be appear to be any shims in here so i don't know how they deal with the float of the c view joint but maybe that's just built into the to tolerances they've got these mounting lugs here and here i don't really know why They've got that, well I guess because it's a different shape actually, that's why they've got it. A Land Rover's um, uniform all the way around so you can just mount it whichever way you want. Um, there's the bearings in there, greased up, we've got a washer. The lock nuts are pretty much identical, I think they're 54mm instead of 52mm on a Land Rover. The difference is the, the locking washer in the middle has got actual tabs that you can flip around. Um, so it's more designed to have tabs bent over whereas the Land Rover is just one washer and you just got to bend the entire thing over. This makes it a bit easier because these are easier to bend. The Land Rover sometimes is a bit tricky to get the thing bent all the way down and you can get shards of metal get ripped off as you're doing it that will could end up in the bearing. Um, so it's probably a bit better here on the Toyota. Stub axle is this, well, they call it a spindle and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts instead of the six on the on the Land and the Land Rover. I'm not sure if that makes it stronger, um, but it seems to be more secure. I think this it's got a larger diameter um, because this is the front one. They've also got the bush in here. It seems to it's got these cutouts in here, uh, so I think that's a bit better probably lubrication than on the on the Defender. And it's got the needle needle roller bearing in there just like the Defender as well to hold the CV joint in place. Looking at the seal land, it's got a seal that runs in the same place as the Land Rover and the bearings run on these two lands here is pretty much the same apart from the fact that the inner bearing 
you see this diameter is larger which means the bearing here is smaller than this one so you've got two different sizes of bearings not particularly sure why they've done that maybe it's a cost cutting that the outer bearing will get most of the wear because it's further away from the center um, so it's got more of a leverage effect so they put a bigger bearing here uh, maybe it's cheaper to put a smaller bearing there but it's uh, it's just a bit more fiddly I guess to buy the different bearings so the spindle was the stub axle pretty much identical I guess plus one for more bolts it looks a bit stronger the mounting but minus one the bearings seem a bit more fiddly. Now this is the equivalent of Land Rover's um, mud shield. Um, Land Rover just has a metal disc that runs on the inside of the hub, very fine tolerance so that it will keep the mud, most of the mud out from that side and then the seal runs inside of that. Toyota have actually created a seal as part of this, so you've got the kind of the mud shield arrangement but then there's a seal that runs on the outer base of the hub around there, so we've got the normal seal that runs in here and then this seal runs around the outside here. Land Rover would have a, the whole shield will run on the inside here where there'll be a fine gap and it'll stop most of the crud. So they've got a seal that runs around here. I guess that's good because it doubles up the seals but as we see here this has been prone to fitting improperly and this thing has been destroyed by it being mashed up as the hub's been put on to the stub axle and it's actually destroyed it. So maybe plus one for being a extra seal but minus one for the fact that you can easily damage it when it goes on. The CV joint is the same sort of thing, it's got the area for the circlip and the splines on here, uh, the shaft where the needle roller bearing runs and the, the whole body of the CV joint actually seems a bit bigger than the Land Rover. don't know if that means it's stronger but possibly so, I have heard that the shafts are stronger. It does look a bit, a little bit larger diameter than the Land Rover, I'm not too sure. Half shaft's only a problem if you drive like a maniac or you're rock crawling and spinning the wheels successively. You can get away with not breaking Land Rover shafts if you drive sensibly. The hub assembly is more or less identical. We've got a swivel housing around here which um, Toyota call a knuckle. This one's on the on the swivel ball equivalent. With a seal at the back. Got the top pin, two bolts. Bottom pin, this one's got four bolts instead and it is part of the steering arm. But the grease is generally a lot thicker. You can see this hasn't hasn't drained out at all. I think it's just normal grease. The swivel housings here are actually part of the axle. On a Land Rover they bolt on so you can replace these as they wear. The seals here, potentially a lot better. There's not much leakage here. Maybe because the, the grease they use is just normal thick grease. It doesn't leak so much. Um, but these tend to can rust like just on the Land Rover but they tend to not bother worrying about it so much you just polish it up a bit and put a new seal on. Um, I think I prefer the Land Rover having them separate so that you can actually replace them as they grow but the benefit of this is that you can put the seal on. The seal is actually split um, at the top and there's several of the seals. There's a felt seal and rubber seal and a couple of and the retainers here. It means you can actually put the seal on from the front without having to take this off which is one of the biggest pains in a Land Rover. Um, it's the same, that's why they've designed having the axle oil seal at the front so you can take that out. So, I probably prefer the arrangement with the seal here, but I prefer being able to change the swivel ball if I need to. One of the other arrangements here is the brake pipe is not connected to the top of the top swivel pin. Um, whereas Land Rover have the, the, the flexible hose coming from here down into a bracket and then in a rigid pipe back around to the caliper. They've just taken the flexible pipe straight from the caliper down here, it means they don't have to stretch it up so far. And then they've got the brake pipes running along the top of the diff, and there's another flexible. Same with on the rear axle of the Land Rover. This is just so much better from a maintenance point of view. You can slot the bracket on the Land Rover so that you can just undo the two nuts either side and take the, the um, bracket out, but by design you've got to split the braking system to be able to get the hub off, which is a real pain not having to do anything with the braking system is a real bonus. So by design, Toyota win on here because this is a lot cleaner, um, a lot easier to work with. Other than that, this is the same arrangement that your shims, you tighten it down, check the preload. These are the caliper bolts and the access to get them off is a lot better. Around here, the bolts go here and you can just get into here to get the bolts off no problem whatsoever 
on a Land Rover, particularly on the back, the front's not a problem, but the back, you've got to basically put a, an extension bar through the spring to be able to get to one of the caliper bolts. So there's a lot better access to get these caliper bolts off. Front differential is probably around about the same size, um, but it's more hypoid. So you see the prop shaft enters the pinion is higher here, gives better ground clearance of the prop shaft, but it, uh, in, well, it increases the strength as well, but it increases the heat, the amount of friction it creates, so the oil has to work a lot harder. Um, I guess hypoid is, I guess, a good thing. It's pretty much identical in terms of design and specification to Land Rover front diff. Um, it's a two-pin diff. Bearing adjustment, probably more holes on the adjuster here. This is a slightly different attachment with a bolt as opposed to like a roll pin through. The carrier bolts are a bit smaller. This center piece, it's machined on here. The Land Rover items, totally cast. And these pins, it's got 200,000 miles on this. But it's pretty solid. I mean, the Land Rover tends to oval out. However, the main difference is this crown wheel was massive. The teeth are about the same size, but there's a massive thickness of metal on there compared to the Land Rover normal, the long nose 24 spline. Because the Land Cruiser have a two wheel drive, the front prop shaft won't really work on the road, it will just sit here. If you had the front lo hubs locked, then it will, it will rotate by way of the wheels rotating, but in the transfer case it wouldn't actually um, be connected. Now, the problem with this prop shaft is the play is absolutely knackered, this prop shaft. It uh, shouldn't be doing that, there's a huge amount of play. Getting the prop shaft off, these nuts, uh, bolts and nuts, were actually pretty easy. They were on quite tight, but it was pretty easy because you you've got a lot of space in here to get a socket in in here, whereas on a Land Rover you need either the prop shaft tool or spanners to get on this, you can just use a normal uh, a normal socket on there, and they're both the same size, they're both 14mm whereas Land Rover's one's 14mm, one's 9 sixteenths. so that's a lot simpler there the yokes themselves have got masses of movement that is a huge amount of movement as in um, articulation um, a lot more than a Land Rover, but then I don't know that it's totally required. Grease nipple in there, different way of doing it. It's probably a bit easier because you can get access to it a bit easier. Um, the Land Rover's down in here and you have to get the prop shaft in the right position. This one, I guess you'd still need it in the right position. But uh, probably a bit easier to get a grease gun in there. The yoke is more or less the same at the other end. It's quite, quite long. The UJs are, yeah, they're quite diddy. They're quite small, but then this is almost like the you know the, the the small prop, the little prop that doesn't get used that often. So they've not really beefed it up that much. So I think prop shaft bolts better. Prop shaft itself is probably a bit less heavy duty than the Land Rover one. And then right here, and then the rear prop shaft is quite long. As you can see, it's quite a beast because this is an extended. It's the pickup. It's an extended wheelbase so it's a bit longer than the 110 but this prop shaft is absolutely massive it's huge I mean the diameter on that that is massive that's I can hardly get my hand around halfway um, that's massive and the universal joints are a lot bigger in the flanges and yokes are a lot bigger um, I think that's because this car will mostly run in two-wheel drive therefore it's got the whole weight of the vehicle going through the rear prop shaft, whereas on the Land Rover is permanent four wheel drive, so it's always split front to back. The rear diff actually seems pretty big. I mean, the axle tubes don't seem that wide a diameter, really. And they do have a problem with Land Cruisers when cracking the axles around about where the leaf springs mount. Um, but this diff just seems enormous in terms of its diameter, which means it's probably got a hefty crown wheel in there. So they've probably beefed it up because it is two wheel drive most of the time and it's got to take the full weight of the vehicle on the road. Um, it's also slightly high point so it's slightly off the centre line down here. That's going to make it stronger. The rear diff is the one you want it to be generally the strongest because it gets most use going uphill. It's going to take most of the weight. Um, if you can have any diff strong, the rear one's probably the one you're going to want to have with the most strength. 
So in general then, looking at all the driveline components, a lot of them a lot of them are beefed up and actually some of them aren't as strong as on a Land Rover. So probably on the whole, it's probably fairly even in terms of the strength of the drivetrain. Um, maybe the maintenance is a little bit easier, certainly on the universal joints and the prop shafts. Um, the hubs, there's bits that are easier, like say swivel seals and things like that, but there's bits that aren't as easy such as um, the brake disc is held on by the subaxle or spindle. Um, so there's a bit of pros and cons to both. Um, I think the Toyota might just edge it in terms of design, ease of maintenance, um, but they're so similar. However, I do prefer the permanent forward road system of the uh, Land Rover. Um, I think it's just a better design. Having self uh, freewheeling hubs that you have to go and get out of the vehicle to lock, um, I think is a bit it's a bit archaic, I mean Land Rover used to have those on the series vehicles and got rid of them so I think it's not ideal from a usability point of view when you're driving um, but there are benefits to having a part-time four-wheel drive system you can completely isolate the front differential and CV joints if you have a problem with them you can just completely disconnect that part of the vehicle and continue driving so um, that's, that's a benefit but uh, it just shows that Land Rovers are totally designed to be driven off-road Land Cruisers they got a bit of a compromise between on-road and off-road. Click here to go to the next video. Right here. That's where the button is. Right there.